So for the last week, the big news out of Hawaii has been that we finally reached an agreement with Japan to allow visitors from Japan to skip the 14-day mandatory quarantine in Hawaii if they get a negative test 72 hours before their flight. And that exemption starts today. And like most people, I was thinking this is great news. And we love Japanese tourists in Hawaii. They're friendly, well-mannered, they follow the rules, and they spend a lot of money. I know that there are probably a lot of businesses that are very excited to welcome back the Japanese tourists, especially in Waikiki, Kailua, and North Shore. However, as Hawaii prepares to welcome back visitors from Japan, I think it's prudent to first ask ourselves, do they even want to come here? And so in this video, I want to talk about five reasons why maybe there won't be many visitors from Japan just yet. And I hope that I'm wrong and that we're flooded with Japanese tourists in the coming months, especially for the holidays. I'd love to see ABC stores filled, long lines at Honolulu Cookie Company and trolleys and tour buses running up and down Waikiki at full capacity again. But there are a lot of things to consider that we as the host may not be thinking about or maybe there are issues that we can better address or communicate some solutions for those issues. And by no means is this video meant to imply that Hawaii is unsafe. I think we've made it pretty loud and clear that Hawaii is ready to safely welcome back visitors from Japan. And I can just speak on a personal note that my wife's parents are in Japan and they haven't met our son yet because of the travel restrictions. And I just think about them and how hard it must be as grandparents to not actually be able to see your grandchild in person. And so if this whole system opens up an opportunity for them to get to see my son, then I think that it's great. So this would probably be the biggest reason why many Japanese people may not want to come to Hawaii or travel outside of their country at this time. Japan has a strict 14-day mandatory quarantine for all Japanese nationals entering Japan in which they are restricted from using public transportation, which if you've been to Japan is pretty much how most people travel. So upon their return from a trip, they'll be stuck in quarantine for two weeks at a hotel at the airport. And maybe you're thinking that two weeks isn't that big a deal, right? Like just work from home. But I don't think it's that simple because, well, first, their company may not offer working from home as an option. And second, time off in Japan is different than time off in the United States. Studies have found that on average, workers in Japan are entitled to about 18 days of paid vacation per year. However, they found that workers only used about nine days. And why is that? Well, I think it's because the work culture in Japan is different than in the United States. In Japan, they work very hard and the office environment there makes it difficult to want to take time off. There's a reason they have the phrase karoshi or death by overwork. The Japanese do have public holidays throughout the year, the highlight being golden week at the end of April, but it's not like in the United States where it's easier to take off from work for that big family vacation. So if a person from Japan wants to vacation in Hawaii and they can't work from home when they get back to Japan, their average six day vacation could end up costing them at least three weeks of consecutive paid leave, which would be extremely difficult to request. And you know what? Maybe there are Japanese people who have much more flexible schedules. Maybe they don't have to work when they go back to Japan, in which case the difficulties of taking time off from work wouldn't really be a factor. But still, it's a matter of convenience and value. Is having to take more time off worth it? Okay, this reason is a little bit of speculation and by no means am I trying to portray Hawaii as dangerous for visitors. However, I think that the Japanese are observant and they recognize that times are tough in Hawaii because of lack of tourists this year. And when times get hard, crimes tend to go up. If they've been here before, they may have heard about Hawaii's property crime problem. And if they've been here before and had the unfortunate experience of being robbed in Hawaii, then they definitely know that crime does exist here. It's something that we don't like to talk about here in Hawaii, but let's be real, it happens. Just look up Stolen Stuff Hawaii on Facebook. Because whenever I read stories from there, it kind of just like freaks me out and I want to lock up all my stuff, make sure my car is okay. <sighs> But haven't total crimes on Oahu actually gone down? 
And that's actually true. They have from July 2019 to June 2020. But the drop started in January. And while crimes against persons and crimes against society have stayed relatively the same during that period, the decrease really came from crimes against property, which includes things like theft and robbery. So that makes me wonder why the decrease in property crimes. Did thieves just give up when the pandemic hit? Or did they just have less people to steal from? Personally, I don't like it when it happens to tourists, especially from Japan. Tourists from Japan are really good visitors and they come from a very safe and trusting society. Back in Japan, they leave their bags on the tables and know that no one is gonna steal it while they're gone. Some don't lock their doors at night and they just don't have that fear because it doesn't happen that often in Japan. So when they come to Hawaii with their designer bags and expensive electronics and nice wallets full of cash, they're just walking targets. To quote an HPD deputy chief, tourists make great victims and any victim of larceny or theft of personal property has a pretty low chance of getting their stuff back. I mean, let's face it, if a tourist has their bag stolen on the beach, there's not much the police or anyone can really do about it. Because let's not forget that before all of this pandemic stuff happened, we were hearing about crimes against tourists and Kapuna quite a bit in the news. I know it's hard to remember those times, it just seems like forever, but there was real concern in the community because Kapuna and tourists were being targeted. In the end, I hope that the tourists from Japan who do come now are safe and I hope that they feel safe. I hope that they pay attention to what's going on around them and that we don't hear any more stories about Japanese tourists getting robbed. Japanese tourists are very smart. You'll see that they often travel through planned packages, which means that they are mostly in groups with itineraries. They read the magazines and check social media, and they know what they want to see, and they are very organized. You know, I don't really see a lot of wandering Japanese people that don't really have a plan. I mean, after all, they only have a limited time to shop eat and explore. And a lot of the Japanese visitors are repeat visitors. In 2019, 68% of Japanese visitors were repeaters with the average number of prior trips being about four. So they've actually been here quite a bit. More importantly, the Japanese visitors know that things have changed in Hawaii and that the Hawaii they remember on their past trips is probably not gonna be the same one that they get if they were to come right now. A lot of their favorite places are closed or limited to less days of operation. Dining in is still sort of an option, but with less restaurant capacity, they may have to either wait longer for a table or just do takeout. And I think one of the special parts about visiting Hawaii repeatedly is that you rekindle old memories of things you did before while also trying out new things and creating new memories. I've done this every time I've gone back to Japan. I primarily stay in Shinjuku, which is in Tokyo, and I visit a lot of the same places I've been to before. But with each trip, my circle of exploration gets a little bit wider and wider and wider. And it's been great. And it keeps me wanting to come back to Japan. But with how limited things are in Hawaii right now, it's going to be more challenging for visitors to build new memories when so much has been shut down or is limited. In fact, I think a lot of the current visitors are a little disappointed in the Hawaii experience. And of course, because we're in the middle of a pandemic. And that's not to say that it's not possible to have a great time in Hawaii right now. It's just gonna take really good planning and an open mind. It's not cheap to travel from Japan to Hawaii. And with the pre-testing requirements, it definitely did not get any cheaper. They estimate that the PCR test that Japanese visitors must take before arriving in Hawaii will cost roughly 30,000 to 40,000 yen or basically three to four hundred dollars. Now you may be thinking in the US that that's not that bad because you know we pay so much for healthcare and that's just normal. But the Japanese have a different healthcare system and they have a national health insurance which covers most medical costs. This test however isn't covered yet so they'll be paying this out of pocket. But 300 to 400 dollars isn't that bad, right? You're just going on vacation. Well, when you consider that each person will have to take the test and that a lot of Japanese tourists travel in groups like with their family, 
it can start to get expensive. For a family of four, you're looking at an extra $1,200, which is a pretty significant increase in a family vacation to Hawaii. It's too bad that Hawaii couldn't find a way to subsidize the testing in Japan, whereby we could reimburse Japanese visitors when they arrive. Maybe they can take advantage of the cheaper tests when Hawaii gets its own mass testing facility up and running, but that might take a while and that's a whole nother issue. I know it's hard to believe, but the US has a bit of a reputation right now when it comes to the pandemic, and it's not a good reputation. Everyone is seeing how the cases continue to rise sharply, and it looks like we're headed toward another wave as the holidays approach. And of course, the Japanese know that Hawaii has just allowed more visitors from the mainland to come, which is a good thing. We want visitors to come. However, they don't know how safe Hawaii is yet with the influx of visitors from the mainland and I think that uncertainty affects their confidence in traveling here. It's kind of like in school if you're friends with that weird kid. You may be normal but because you hang out with the weird kid, people then think that you're weird too. And so by association, because we are inviting visitors from other parts of the US that have higher numbers of infections, I think Japanese visitors may think that we have high infection numbers as well. Like I mentioned in a previous video, part of the stress of living during this time is that as we go outside and interact with all kinds of people, we have to trust that they are staying safe and adhering to the rules. We have to trust strangers and not just that, but we have to trust strangers with one of our most precious things, our health. But like I said, I hope that Hawaii sees a good increase in Japanese visitors over time. I think they're expecting a slow start, but hopefully as time goes on, we can demonstrate that Hawaii is still a great place to visit. So thanks for watching and aloha.